All right, what's up everyone? Mecca here. Welcome back to another Fire Emblem character guide. And today, as you can see, we're doing Sacred Stones. Not because Sacred Stones desperately needs a guide, because it's considered one of the easier games, but I figure because it's one of the easier games, it's also a game that people start with a lot because it gets recommended as a first Fire Emblem. So you might want some guidance into the characters if, you, uh, if you're if you playing the game. Also, there's split promotions, so I thought it'd be nice to have some recommendations out for that. I do have a really old video about split promotion paths, and even though it has a lot of views, I'm not super happy with the quality. So this way I get to sort of prove the quality on it a little bit. Uh, of course, it's still unscripted, so there's no guarantee it's going to be better uh, in any way. Um, as always, remember, this is not a tier list. I'm using the tier list maker to visualize it, but it's not a tier list. It's a character guide. Uh, I'm going to try my best to call these things um, categories and not tiers, but I'll probably make the mistake somewhere. Um, also, reminder, they are not ordered within a tier, so just because someone is on the left doesn't mean they're better than whoever's on the right. And uh, yeah, other than that... The higher they are, the easier they are to use, except for the special utility tier, of course. Uh, generally what the tiers mean... There we go. Generally what the categories mean is uh, no-brainer means the units are just good when they join and they stay good forever. Um, they might need to keep up to get some XP to keep up, but generally they're going to be really good forever. There's no... You can't go wrong, that's why they're no-brainers. Uh, good, good investments means they're good, but they need the XP to keep up and they start out like stellar, like the no-brainers, but they're still, you know, they're reasonably competent when they join. And they stay that way as long as you keep using them. Uh, good no investment means they're good, but maybe not forever. But uh, at least when they join, they'll be good. And then if you keep using them, they might like fall off a little bit. But for the most, they'll be like pretty good. Um, basically, just pre promotes and then null, who is basically a pre promote. Uh, the okay situational tier is a little different from what I did before. I didn't want to make too many tiers and make this seem more complicated than it is. So okay situational is like a mix of people that I think are okay long term but not great and people that I think are okay to use for a bit and then they just you know we're gonna use them again uh, but the main difference between those kind of people and the good and no investment is these I think they feel a fair bit better than the ones in here uh, you'll find there's like, actually no pre promotes in here only Sirene but other than that it's all promoted units uh, so you have like in the early game that are like good for a bit when you have no alternatives uh, but as you go on you kind of just want to replace them or leave them off entirely uh, high effort is units that join underleveled or underpowered or both and they take a while to catch up. When they do, they're probably still fantastic and uh, Sacred Stones does offer grinding in the tower and overall encounters. So there's nothing stopping you from catching them up that way. Uh, but they'll probably need either that or just significant slowing down in order to feed them kills. Which, you know, is fun. Nothing against people who enjoy that. Uh, but I think it's fair to have like a bit of a warning sign on them that says, hey, this is going to take a little while before you can actually make them good. But once they're caught up, uh, I mean, the growths on these units are generally fine. So they'll probably turn out right. And if you just want good units to be good at some point in the game, you don't care how much work it is, these units are for you. Training zeros and heroes is fun after all. And then finally, we have the special utilities here. Uh, this is where I put the thieves. Again, I'll start with those. Um, if you want to open chests, if you want to steal items from enemies, these are your go-to units. But outside of that, they're not that great for combat. Uh, Colm joins early as a thief, and he can be made into something resembling a combat unit. Uh, he can support with Naomi to get a lot of attack and hit, as well as crits. Uh, it's actually full of all of those, and then like some avoid as well. Uh, that is a lot of fun, that's the main way I would recommend using Colm if you want him as a combat unit. Uh, but what I, usually do, what I usually do is um, deploy him when there's something to steal. Or when I want him to open chests, and uh, once Renak joins, replace Colm with uh, with him, and also deploy Renak for the desert chapter, so you can dig up items with him with 100% chance. Because otherwise, you're going to be trying and trying and trying and failing because it's luck based. Uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot of like things for thieves to do. Uh, there's actually buyable chest keys from chapter nine or chapter ten onward, depending on which route you take. Uh, nine Erica, ten Ephraim. So in that sense. Um, thieves are like more useless than ever when it comes to you know their special utility, uh, but there are some good stealable items um, scattered throughout the game. There is a energy ring in chapter seven you don't want to miss it's on a mage, and in chapter fourteen I think on both routes, but definitely on Ephraim route there's a body ring that you might not want to miss. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of stealable items that are really worth deploying your thieves for. So I recommend not worth not bothering with the thief for most of it. But if you're someone who likes to have these around and uh, you enjoy the class or you are just you really are insistent on picking locks with actual lockpick users then uh, you know go nuts it, it could be worse after all uh, but if i had to rate them on combat alone i put them in high effort probably so uh, from here let's just go from the top and uh 
make the units less and less spectacular as we go along. So the no-brainers, like I said, um, no reason not to use them unless you don't like them. You don't have to use these, especially on the Sacred Stones, which is, again, one of the more easy uh, Fire Emblem games. Probably not easier for people who are new to Fire Emblem, like, it takes a while to get used to it. It is definitely a game with a learning curve, but uh, Sacred Stones better to ease into it than any other. Uh, Seth is a, a really brainless unit. Uh, he joins pre-promoted as a paladin and he wrecks everything from start to finish. It doesn't matter uh, how far into the game you go, he ruins everything. So his bases are really good for his starting time, but his growths are also really good. The series has a lot of uh, units that have low growth rates uh, that are still pre-promotes, like Seth, but that means they should be worse long term. But Seth is like, no, I also have good growths, so I'm always going to level up well. Um, and I like to feed him boss kills, especially if you want to use him. It's not required, uh, but if you want Seth like the best he could possibly be, then boss killing with him is definitely recommended. Uh, but yeah, he ruins everything. So whether you want him to be, uh, you know, a safe uh, crutch whenever things go wrong, or if you just want him to be like a normal member of your army, it doesn't matter. I would not recommend soloing entire chapters with Seth uh, unless you're into that sort of thing, because that will you know, on a level the rest of your cast, and you might want to train more than just Seth. If you don't, you know, go nuts, you cancel it again with Seth. But I wouldn't recommend it for your first playthrough. And then there's Tethys, the Dancer. Dancers, I've said before with Ninian and Nils and uh, Larum and Elfin, that using Dancers, it does take some practice before you can actually make full use of them, because uh, they do die to a lot of attacks, and they do not counterattack, so exposing them is a risk that you gotta avoid. But the return on using these units is so good that I still put them in no-brainer, especially because they require no training, no investment. It's just you dance for people, they get an extra turn that gives them more mobility, more flexibility, and it gives you more offense if you dance for like a really good unit. Like let's let's say you have Seth kill like one unit and then you dance for him with Tethys, and then he kills another unit. That's a pretty good return on your no investment. So I would always recommend you use Tethys no matter uh, what route you're playing or what you are into. She's is really good, uh, but you do have to be careful when using her. These three uh, are a big difference between what we have here, a character guide and a tier list. On a tier list, you know, we argue about which units contribute more over the course of the game and we take availability into account. So units like these that join past halfway through the game tend to get a worse rating in tier lists because they're not around for the whole thing. So someone like Franz or Vanessa who joins really early is going to be higher rated than these units. Uh, but in this, we're just recommending like, is this character good when you get them or not? And for all these three, the answer is a resounding yes. There's no reason not to use any of these in any routes. Um, that's another thing that all three of these have in common is depending on what route you're playing, they join a fair bit later. For example, Garrick, he joins in 10 Erica, but like 13 Ephraim. Sally joins in, I think, 12 Erica, and then like 15 Ephraim. Cormag joins in 10 Ephraim, and then like 13 in Erica. So they miss like three chapters uh, if in their worst routes. But it doesn't matter for this tier list, because regardless of which route you're playing, once these characters join, they are really, really good and worth using. Uh, their bases are good, and they are like their, their growths are still good enough to keep up, and their weapon ranks are worth it as well. So, Garrick joins, as I said, in 10 Erica as a level 10 mercenary. They can insta promote to hero or ranger, whatever you want. I would recommend hero. Um, split promos are a thing, like I said, so it would be fun to talk about those a little bit. I recommend hero for most players because the access to having a hand axe is super nice. Uh, once you range is something that the ranger doesn't have outside of some very weird things like the light brand. So, being able to just counter enemies is nice. Uh, there's not a whole lot of other reasons to go hero, I do believe. Uh, Ranger has some advantages, of course. It has um, one more movement, uh, a horse, so you can rescue drop people around. And uh, bows can be situationally useful, but generally axes are better. Uh, you also get a way to beat lance users more easily without you having to use a lance reaver. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend hero. Uh, but this is the case for all promo options in FE8. You can go with either one and still beat the game fairly easily. Like, no promo path will soft lock you or make you feel really bad. Uh, Garrick is actually like one of the more balanced options because um, all of axes, bows, and horse have merits. Most of the choices are a bit more lopsided, I find, but uh, I do still recommend Hero for most people. Sale is a pre-promoted sage, and uh, he's best in Erica route because then you get him earlier, so you can grind his staff rank up if you want to, or just you know make use of his uh, explosive offense earlier. But if you get him later, he's still just as good. It just um, it makes it, it takes a little longer to get him to A rank stabs, which is for my playstyle is most relevant because I like to have him use warp. But uh, if you're playing casually, it doesn't matter that much. I do think warp is really good. But there's so much more utility to Sally. Um, first of all, just one to range offense is really good. His durability is sometimes a little suspect, but overall he can take like one or two hits without going down. 
His speed is good, his magic is good, he hits on enemy resistance, you can use all kinds of tomes, you can make him use Excalibur if you want to, which I really like, getting him to ask anima is not difficult at all. And it's just staff utility, like restore, hammer, and barrier, uh, rescue, warp, uh, just healing, physicking, all that stuff is available to him. He joins with C and staffs, but it's easy enough to get him to B, and it's not difficult at all to get him to A if you wanted to. So very, very good character, and no reason not to use him when you get him. Same goes for Cormag. Joins very early in Ephraim routes and joins kind of late in Erica route. Uh, in Erica route, it's important actually to note that the chapter he joins in is that uh, chapter with Ayas as a boss, the Great Knight boss. And if you seize that chapter too early, like if you kill Ayas, the map ends. And if you kill him before Cormac flies in, then you can't get him. He just he's just not there. <laughs> so they made him missable. He joins like turn eight or nine, I think. Uh, you have to talk to him with Erica. So don't end the map early if you want to get Cormac and Erica route. In Ephraim route, it's pretty hard to miss him. You just have to fly Tana up to him and recruit him. Uh, but in Erica route, you actually cannot recruit him with, with Tana, I believe. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, he's a Wyvern Rider, he's bulky, he's strong, he's fast enough to double. Uh, maybe not a base, but with a couple level ups he'll do it, so I still thought it was good enough to put him in a no-brainer. Flyer utility is just super nice, uh, makes him a very flexible unit. You gotta watch out for bows because they are triple effective, so if they don't one-shot him, they will two-shot him until you get the... Um, Iot Shield, I think it's called? No, it's... Um, Whatever, Falter drops it, the Felix Shields, there we go. Uh, you want to protect him against arrows with that. Uh, as for promotion, as I said, Cormag, his speed is good, but he could use a little help, so I like to make him a Wyvern Knight, because he has a higher speed promotion bonus. But uh, Wyvern Lord gives him storage, which can also be worth it sometimes. I just use an Axe Weaver personally, when I want to have Weapon Triangle, because it's not very commonly needed. Um, like I said with Garrick, getting access is nice, because Lances are pretty common as weapon types. Uh, but Cormag is so flexible, and X enemy, X enemies at the point where he's he joins are just kind of rare-ish. So uh, you can either have him avoid using like fighting X users altogether, or just have him go to a different area, or just deal with the fact they have weapon triangle that kind of kind of work too. Uh, so yeah, I recommend Wyvern Knight. Pierce is kind of like a minor factor; it's like a skill, uh, but it only has a level percent chance of proccing, and after promotion that means it's like one percent after he's promoted, and then it goes up by one every time he levels up, which goes kind of slowly. So Pierce is not that great, but it's just a nice bonus. So that's the no-brainers, now we have the good investment part, and this is probably where we'll be talking promotion choices. So Franz is a Cavalier that joins very early, and it's my favorite Cavalier in this game, so I would recommend using him definitely. He's just, he joins early, he has lances and swords, he is like a couple points from one running enemies, like a couple points of strength and speed each. So if you get a little bit lucky, he'll be snowballing out of control in no time. Especially if you're just kind of playing slowly and just giving him kills whenever he wants them. And uh, yeah, in, it, like, in, a, in a faster, like efficient playthrough, he might not be able to keep up with Seth. But for any casual playthrough, I would always recommend Franz. Um, if he doesn't turn out too well, you have other Cavaliers you can use if you want to, or just use Seth. But I would always recommend giving Franz a shot because he's just he's just the perfect growth unit. He joins early with solid enough bases, close enough to one rounding. He has weapon triangle control, and he can promote to either Paladin or Great Knight. Uh, Great Knight has axes. Paladin has two more movements. I would recommend Paladin. I think it's the better class despite the lack of axes. Two movement, it doesn't sound like much for like slower playthroughs, but I found that like the difference between eight and eight and six move, especially when you're able to move after a lot of actions with Kanto, is just such a huge deal that I think Paladin is better. But uh, Great Knight does have slightly better stats and axes, so if you're into that, you can use that. Uh, my problem with Great Knight is only having six move and having like terrain penalties as if you're like mounted still is just like it makes him have like two to three move in some maps, which is just awful. It's I'd rather just have Franz be able to go wherever he likes. So I would recommend Paladin. Vanessa is a uh, Pegasus Knight, pretty good flying utility. I've already said I'm a big fan of it. Um, a little tough to use early on because there's some axe users, but after chapter three, I find that they're mostly gone. There's still some fighters around, but there's also like soldiers and uh, mercenaries that you can fight. Uh, her speed is really good. Her auto stats not as great. Her look is pretty good too. Uh, I think she's a good investment for stat boosters like Angelic Robe, Energy Ring, Draco Shield, just to make her more durable because having a flyer that can fly around and kill enemies in one round while surviving is a bigger asset than having that on a foot unit, simply because flyers can move further, so it gives you more flexibility. And, uh, you know, your other best units, they don't need these boosts as much. So Vanessa's a good target for those. Um, but again, up to you. This is just advice. Do whatever you like. 
And uh, the promotion choice, I recommend Wyvern Knight because it gives her a huge constitution boost. So she will stop losing as much speed from heavier weapons, especially javelins, which are 1-2 range weapons. Um, again, Sacred Stones has a lot of enemies that have 2 range and or 1 range. So things like archers, mages, etc. It's good to be able to counter those without losing a bunch of speed. So for that reason, I would recommend Wyvern Knight. Falcon Knight gives her access to swords though, which is kind of alright. But it doesn't have as huge of a con boost. I don't remember the durability being significantly different between promotion options. So I would not worry about that too much. But uh, yeah, I, I would recommend Wyvern Knight Vanessa. Again, Pierce, kind of a bonus, doesn't really matter. Muller is your first healer and probably the best staff user for the first half of the game. Uh, there's another one, Natasha, but he's uh, generally better. George with the C rank and staffs, you can use Mend right away, so no need to worry about that. And uh, you might want to spam Torch whenever you can to get his experience further up. He can promote into either a uh, Bishop or a Sage. Both fairly nice options. Uh, the unique thing about Mulder as a Sage is you can use Elfire without losing speed. So that is something that, for example, Artur and uh, well, Sally, I think he loses like a bit of speed from it. Um, but Mulder isn't that fast to begin with, so it's not that big of a deal. I personally prefer going Bishop because the Slayer ability lets him just kill monsters in one round. And I also just, I think it gets an experience boost as well when he's fighting. So I think that's more useful than what Sage offers, but both are fine. He's mostly going to be a staff unit, and like I said with Sally, uh, there are so many good staff utilities in this game. Uh, just healing alone is useful, but then you've got like Warp, Restore, Rescue, uh, Barrier, um, Hammer, and Rest yeah, the whole works. I think I mentioned Restore too, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> I like having uh, at least one Restore user around, because status staffs are obnoxious. So yeah, Mold are pretty good. Um, Ross is a training unit, so he starts basically at minus level 10, so his bases are pretty awful. But because he joins so early, it's not that hard to raise him up without, you know, having to slow down a lot. That's like what makes units high effort, is that you have to slow down and really take your time to get them raised up. And with Ross, a little bit of that is appreciated, but he doesn't need it to keep up. There are playthroughs that beat this game in a very low turn count frame or whatever, where Ross is still able to keep up. So in that sense, I thought it was good enough to put him in good investment. So he's pretty nice in that regard. And uh, I would recommend using him if you enjoy using like pirates and berserkers. That kind of class is fun. Uh, water walking is his, um, like an exclusive ability that only really he and Dazla have access to. Besides, of course, flyers, but that's not water walking. Um, he can walk on peaks, so that gives him like a huge avoid bonus if he wants it. Uh, that stuff is like really useful. And I mean, this kind of unit is fun to use, especially when they join that early. Uh, the hatchet is a pretty nice weapon that he can use. Others can use it too, but he's like pretty good with it because it doesn't weigh him down. Uh, I would recommend going Pirate Berserker, and uh, that way he uses an Ocean Seal to promote to Tier 2, which I think is pretty good, because it means uh, there's only one unit that can use it, that's Colm. And uh, as I said, Colm isn't like recommended training, so that way the Ocean Seal is free for him. But if you want to use a... If you're, not, if you're okay with using a Hero Crest, then you could also go like Fighter and then... Um, Warrior. No, not Warrior. I wouldn't recommend Warrior. I would recommend Hero. I actually have a whole Waifu video on Ross, uh, like a, a Wii and Lies interesting units. Uh, interesting farm units kind of video, like explaining this in depth, but generally you'll find that uh, as long as Ross gets like as much speed as possible, Berserker is his best path. So for that reason I don't recommend Warrior, because it gives a less, uh, less speed promotion bonuses. Then we have Artur, uh, similar build to Molar, but he starts out as a monk with like magic instead of... Uh, you know, a, a guy that heals, uh, a priest. <laughs> so it's a little bit different. He gains XP faster that way because healing experience is kind of slow. So in that sense, Artur is like one of your better staff users after promotion. He can promote sooner, at least for me, the way I generally play. Uh, but similar choices to Molder when it comes to promotion, either Sage or Bishop. I recommend Bishop for the same reason I recommend it for Molder. Um, Slayer is nice. And uh, he has a C rank of staffs as the bishop, whereas as a sage he gets a D rank. So that gives him access to a little more options, make it a little quicker for him to get higher rank staffs, such as, uh, well, warp is the main one for me, but things like having barrier at C rank is nice. So I'd recommend him as a bishop. He's pretty good, uh, fairly fast, a little fragile, gotta protect him. But that goes for most of these units. Like none of these units are like particularly durable, besides like Franz, I guess, and F frame. So um, yeah, the, the really durable units are up here. And then there's like a couple down here. Uh, then there's Lutz, another magic user. Uh, this one is like really popular with a lot of people because her magic is really high, and I think she reminds people of Nino. 
Very understandable. Her magic is really high. Uh, she hits harder blow for blow than Arthur, but has a little more trouble to dub double. <laughs> has a little more trouble doubling. Uh, usually in tier lists and these kind of things, uh, Lute is put like slightly below Arthur because she has a lot of things that are just slightly worse than him. So um, she joins a little later, same chapter, but she joins near the end rather than near the start. Um, sure, you can recruit her right away if you want to, uh, but that's another story. Um, lower level, uh, lower staff rank after promotion. She only, she only gets D rank. Uh, as a Sage and a Mage Knight, whereas Arthur can get C through Bishop. Uh, less speed, she's just double F half, and she's uh, weighed down by fire in addition to just having less speed to begin with. So all those things kind of weigh against her, but that doesn't mean she's like unusable. I still put her in good investment, because if you want her to be, she can still be good. But obviously it takes some time, but there's still staff utility to look forward to. I recommend Mage Knight for loot, because it gives her 7 move rather than 6, and a horse rather than no horse, so she can be helpful for rescue dropping. She can just kind of, like after promotion she'll probably one on enemies because her speed is good enough to double. And uh, as long as you take care of her durability a bit, she's not gonna die. Um, like she's like, I would say she has, roughly has like Sally level durability at promotion, which is like not great, but not terrible either. Good enough to get by, especially with 1 to range, which means you don't take a counter, and enemies are kind of incentivized to not attack you. Uh, what else is there to say? Uh, I guess as a sage, she does have higher uh, magic cap. Uh, it actually takes a long while for that to be a factor, so that's why I think Mage Knight is a better choice. Uh, I know there's already, I already know, like any FE video about loot, people in the comments will say go sage, higher magic cap, uh, 30 magic is better than 25, but until like very, very late into the game, it's not gonna matter. And uh, at that point in the game, you have Excalibur and you can like one shot everything anyway, so it really isn't that significant. If you're going to like the creature campaign, which this video is not aimed at, then Sage is like an option because you get like light magic and higher magic cap is more important than the higher movement because in the creature campaign you can like infinitely move boost anyone. So if you're one of those people that wants to go for creature campaign things only, then yeah, Sage is going to be better for you after the game is over. I still think that during the game, Mage Knight is better, but the difference is so small for casual playthroughs that it doesn't really matter. Again, this is just a recommendation. Then there's Ephraim, uh, one of the stronger lords in the series, stat-wise, he's very fast, but most units that are fast have low attack power, like they tend to be like Myrmidons with low strength, uh, units like uh, Joshua, Marissa, Erica. Ephraim is like, no, I use lances and uh, I have good strength, so I just want to run things. No, I like to say that Ephraim is like a, a raven with lances. Uh, from FE7. So yeah, that makes him uh, really powerful. Uh, he doesn't get to promote until very late into the game and he only has one option, so <laughs> that's going to be a very short discussion. But um, yeah, if you enjoy using Ephraim, you might want to go Ephraim route because you get to keep him for longer. Uh, Ephraim route is harder, of course, but uh, Ephraim is also better, so it kind of evens out almost. Um, very, very powerful unit, not afraid of anything, kills everything, doesn't pick fights, he cannot win. Uh, Regin Leaf is his personal weapon, it just okos any mounted unit or armored unit because it has high might and triple effectiveness, just kind of obliterates everything. Uh, even non, yeah, even units that are not weak to it will just kind of die most of the time. Because Ephraim is fast and Ephraim is strong. And that weapon is pretty good too. So yeah, um, always use Ephraim. He's ridiculously good. I would almost put him a no-brainer, honestly. Um, but yeah. Then Tana is a Pegasus Knight and uh, she's a good investment. Uh, she's like, she's somewhat close to being an okay situational because she does join on the level, especially in the Ephraim route. But Fly Utility is so good and her growths are really good as well. And her bases are good for her level. So I would say she's like a little too good to put down there, but um, just be noted, like she just joined a little bit underleveled, so keep that in mind, but still, good Pegasus Knight, um, same class options as Vanessa, um, Wyvern Knight recommended, but can't go wrong with Falcon Knight, the class is just really good in general, um, good attack power, once she's like able to grow for a bit, she does have like an okay strength growth, and a good base for her level, it just takes a while for her to catch up, like she joins at like level 4, where other units might be like level 10 to level 15 somewhere, maybe even promote it, if you gave them an early age promotion, which I would sometimes recommend actually, I would recommend promoting it around level 15. That's when XP gain kind of slows down, so yeah, keep that in mind. Um, Mur, also a unit you usually put low on tier lists because of our low availability, but if I've learned anything during my draft races it's that Mur is just a really good end game feel safe to have. This game does really have a Goto like Athos from FE7 that joins late with really good stats, uh, but it does have Mur who, I mean her bases aren't fantastic but the Dragonstone boosts kind of put her on par with your other units and then some level ups with her really good growths will get her there. And she flies, only with 6 moves, but she does fly. And she has like really good defense growth, like 105, 50% I do believe. And, or like maybe 105, but either way it's like really high. 
and then her Dragonstone just makes her like super durable against like magic especially. And she's effectiveness against monsters with her Dragonstone, so she Okos most of those. Uh, no one to range, but still, anything that attacks her and gets countered just kind of evaporates and dies. Uh, the only thing you kind of have to keep her away from is Druids with Luna, because they will bypass, bypass her high defense. But other than that, she has really, really high um, stats. She's kind of bad against the, uh, one of the last bosses, um, the, the guy, I'm not going to spoil his name in case you're playing for the first time, but um, he can Oko her because he also pierces defenses, but she's really good against like the, the semi-final boss and then the ultimate boss. Um, so if you want to like feel safe for characterizing as those, then she's really good. You don't have to use her, like, you can use other people too, but I've always found her like really effective against those because of her high resistance and her high damage output. So yeah, I enjoy using Murr. Uh, only 50 Dragonstone users, so you have to like not use her for everything. But 50 uses goes a lot, uh, like it goes a long way. Uh, you can't hammer in it, but it's so many uses, it's really hard to run out unless you try. So I recommend keeping like maybe 10 uses around if you're not sure. But generally, yeah, go nuts with Murr. She's super fun to use and uh, definitely a worthwhile investment. It does take investing because her bases are low, but it, she grows really quickly. Like she gains EXP like an unpromoted unit or something. It's it's crazy. She's really good. Next up, I got some units that are good for no investments, but they're not as good as the no-brainers, and they're also not as good long-term as these guys. So they're just good for a bit, and then a problem. At some point, you should probably dump them, or they just don't have that high of a peak. Anyway, uh, Dazla Berserker joins around the middle of the game, both routes, and uh, not as great as someone like FE7 Hawkeye or uh, even FE6 Gonzalez, because he's just not as ridiculously strong. Only 50% crit bonus, and his bulk is less, his speed is less. Everything about him is just a little less, but nonetheless, the class is good. Axes are good, crit bonus are good, and he still has got like some decent HP and strength. Uh, his main problem is his speed, he just doesn't really double anything, it's not super slow. The things he does double though, he like demolishes. And if you have a killer axe for him, which uh, I looked it up actually, on every route he gets a killer axe around like when he joins, because you have one from Gib. But on Erica routes, it's just not there for a while, I think. I, I looked at um, uh, triangletech.com and the only killer axe you get is like tip or 14 or something. So uh, that kind of sucks. That means he's kind of stuck with like a, a hand axe and an iron axe basically as his best weapons, which is not a great sign. But he doesn't have the power to make it work. It doesn't have a pretty good script. Also, B rank axes, so it takes a while to hit S rank axes. Until you get the, unless you use the devil axe, which is just a risk enough of itself. But uh, yeah, poor bulk. Uh, I guess magic especially, but sometimes physically as well because of the lack of a void and the lack of, you know, well, dodging mostly. Sometimes getting doubled by like fast sword users can be a problem too. So not ideal, but too good to put in okay situation, I think. He's still like a decent filter for like a couple chapters at least. Uh, for example, here chapter 12, Erica, uh, with all the mountains and stuff, it's nice to have him around. Um, Dusol is really good on Ephraim routes, and then kind of like an okay like, game fit on Erica route if you need one, but generally not as great. But on Dusol, uh, on, Ef on, Eric <laughs> on Ephraim route, I actually really like him, because he joins like very early in chapter 10, and I know I said availability doesn't matter, but that gives him a lot of chapters where he's a good deployment choice, because you don't have as many good late game units yet. So for pretty much all of the mid game, he's a pretty good filler. Uh, if you have like enough units to fill all deployment slots without needing him, more power to you, but I definitely recommend fielding him at the very least. Uh, only 6 move compared to like 7 or 8, but you can keep up with most of your army. Use all 3 weapon types, he's really good bulk, he's especially useful on Phantom Ship, because that's a chapter where the bulk comes in really handy and his res is pretty good as well. So no matter the enemy type, he can like 1 round to slow monsters and counter them with like a 1 to range weapon. Or he can be really strong with like a silver axe, he's just 1 round anything with high HP. So very very useful. And it becomes gradually less useful as the game goes on, I feel like, but if you want him to be good late game, he can be. Uh, he's a pretty good candidate for the Garm, uh, the S-Rank Axe to get plus 5 speed, and Brave Weapons also help him double uh, when his lackluster speed kind of comes to bite him. But yeah, really good bulk, really good strength, and uh, pretty much no investment required to make him good. So use him however long you feel like he's useful, and if you want to drop him afterwards, go ahead. Uh, that's his like, recipe for Ephraim routes. Erica routes, he joins like around the time you would drop him an Ephraim routes, so at that point you probably won't need him for much. Uh, but still, I recommend you try him out a little bit. He's definitely useful when he joins at the very least in Desert Chapter, because he joins along with Ephraim and Null in a corner of the map where you don't really have anyone else. So that means you might have to use him, and you wouldn't feel bad about it, because he's really bulky and really strong, so can't go wrong. 
uh, Null. He's not a pre-promote, but he might as well be because he joins at promotion level uh, 10 or higher. I think it's 10 in both routes, I'm not entirely sure. And you can just instant promote him with either a Guiding Ring or a Master Seal. And uh, then you get a Summoner. Uh, I would recommend Summoner for him. I would not recommend Druid, I recommend Summoner. Because uh, Summoners are busted. I have like a whole video why Summoners are busted. And I recommend you watch it because it was really well made. It was edited by uh, the Fritos. It looks absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, I talk about why Summoners are so good. But in a nutshell, um, it lets you bait enemies completely risk-free. Uh, especially for long-range tomes like Bolting and Shadow Shot. This is really useful. And it can do... Like summons can do a lot of other tricks as well, but that's the main use. It's just keeping your character safe, because the enemy sees that it can kill one of your units, even though it's just a phantom. And you're like, alright, goodbye, you're dead. And uh, yeah, you keep summoning infinitely useful um, soldiers. Only one at a time, but still, that one at a time can just save your butt. So yeah, instant promote him. Don't bother raising him, his, uh, his combat is terrible. Uh, he's got good magic, but then his speed is average, and then his luck is awful, so he can get crit by anything. His defense is horrible, so yeah, don't fight with Null unless you absolutely have to. He can one round like Armor Knights, but that's about it. Nothing else about his combat is really good. Just summon every turn. If you already got a Phantom out, maybe use him to heal someone with his E-Rank stats, but just don't worry about it. Just summon with him. Uh, useful in almost every chapter. Uh, from when he joins to uh, to the end of the game, but if you ever feel like you don't need summoner for that map, just feel free to ditch him. Then there is Inez, uh, a sniper, mostly useful in Erica route because he joins like significantly earlier. Like I think this is the biggest gap in the whole game for like availability because uh, Erica route is like joins chapter ten, Efren route he joins chapter fifteen, and he's mostly here because uh, he's a nice filler for the first couple chapters he's around in in Erica routes like ten and eleven and twelve. They're like route maps. Uh, he can be useful to shoot people through walls. The lack of a counterattack at close range is not great. Uh, it doesn't make him very useful on enemy phases, but it can be nice sometimes to have him counter like enemies uh, that have two range only, uh, or use like a long bow. Uh, eight rank bows is kind of nice, gives him access to silver bow that he joins with, so he can like have a lot of attack power. But eventually your audience will be more useful, so I don't recommend him for very long, but as long as you find him useful, feel free to feel him. The stats are not bad. And uh, Ephraim Rousey joins like in chapter 15, and he's only useful for his joining chapter, and after that I just don't feel like he really has any purpose. Uh, at that point, like a 6 move guy that can only use bows is pretty much outclassed by most of your units. Um, if you are playing something like 0% growth, then you might reconsider and maybe use them for a couple more chapters. But it's not... It's not fantastic. It's not fantastic. And then uh, Orson, the ultimate uh, no investment ditch after you're done with him thing, because you can game kind of forces you to only have him for 5x, so uh, yeah, trade away your, your, his weapons if you haven't already, because uh, he's not going to be around for very long. But in chapter 5x, he is dead useful, and you should use him, because otherwise the chapter is even bigger slog than it is with him, because uh, that chapter is very slow-paced. But uh, yeah, Orson is basically like having Seth for that chapter. That's really all there is to it. Uh, only good for that chapter, but he's pretty good there. Then we have okay situational, what I expect to be the most controversial tier, because I put a couple units here that some people might want to have up here, uh, or that some people might have up here. Uh, I don't really care. If you are smart enough to debate me about this, like if you're familiar with the game enough, then this guy doesn't isn't really meant for you anyway. Uh, but of course, I always enjoy about arguing about units. Okay, so Cal and Ford. Uh, initially, I had Cal up here, actually. I uh, dropped him back down because people were like, hey, they shouldn't be in different categories. So I was like, you know, fine, I'll just put him down here. Um, they are two Cavaliers. I think they're significantly worse than Franz overall statistically. They join at like higher level, but with comparable, slightly better bases, and they're not around as much, so that's why in tier list at least they end up lower. I think there's a significant statistical gap between Franz and Cal and Ford in a casual playthrough. Uh, some might disagree though, so if you want to give them a go, go ahead. Uh, they do have all of 5x to get experience, so you can try them out, see how much you like them. Uh, Cal is slower, bulkier, but stronger. Uh, Ford is a bit faster, and um, well, I hate him, so I guess that's <laughs> if you want to like really, really annoy me, just use him. Actually, though, no, I, I find it funny when other people use Ford to trigger me because it just means I get to like laugh at you know how they struggle to make him work. Uh, I have a big hatred for Ford as a unit because uh, personal experience, and it's become a funny meme. Uh, I actually think he's a terrible unit, but uh, they just. I just don't feel like they're as, as good as some of the other Christmas calves in other games. Um, but yeah, Ford is slightly faster. Only slightly though. Kyle's more constitution, so if you're using like a weapon that weighs him down, they're actually like equally fast. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, I recommend Kyle over Ford if you want to try one of them. Um, if your Franz is like really bad and you really want a Cavalier, um, give them both a try, I guess. Uh, the class is good. Uh, I recommend Paladin for both. If their combat is kind of badish, you might want to try Great Knights, get axes and higher stats. 
but I generally prefer Paladin. Rescue dropping is nice, weapon triangle control is nice, their stats are okay, good enough for Sacred Stones, but you know, they will like fail to amaze you at some points, definitely. Um, yeah. Fuck forward. Erica is the lord of the game, like the first one you get, first character you get basically, and she's uh, like when you get her early on, you can only compare it to Seth, and that's not really fair. Uh, on the whole, Erica is like useful early on, I think, which is why I would call her situational. Uh, as the game goes on, other people get to promote, she doesn't. That makes her less useful, um, less movement than most people, only able to use swords in a game where most enemies use lances and uh, have some kind of weapon going to range. So the only weapon type that Erica likes facing is like axes and then preferably not hand axes. And that makes it like very, like the amount of times you want Erica to fight in mid game is very low, late game as well. Uh, she does promote eventually in chapter, like before chapter 17. So at that point you do have a horse on her and a pretty good personal weapon. Uh, in addition to the one she already has. Rapier is nice sometimes, it can one round armor knights and cavaliers. Uh, she double attacks, which she usually does because she's kind of fast. Uh, if you're familiar with Lin, she has a similar, familiar stat build, like a similar stat build. Uh, just not, the animations are less cool, but it's still a similar stat build. So uh, yeah, fairly good in the early game for killing brigands and just being fast. And a rapier occasionally. Uh, mid game, I would just like kind of leave her off and in late game you can promote her and uh, use her again if you want to. Um, not required, even if you're playing Erica route, but sometimes it's useful to have Stranger or Lord. It depends on your playstyle and what you're comfortable with. Uh, if you would like your Lord to, you know, you don't, have, you don't want to have to protect her all the time, then by all means just keep training her. I generally find it more of a slog to keep training her and easier to just keep her out of combat. But if you want to, you know, have an easier time protecting her, then maybe it's better to train her. Up to you. Uh, but it's not highly recommended because she's not that good. But she's not terrible. She's okay. That's why she's an okay. Uh, Gilliam, Armor Knight that you get in the early game, uh, useful when you have no other deployment options, so you kind of have to deal with him, and uh, you might like him, you might not, he's, like, if you're if you're expecting FE7 Oswin here, you're going to be disappointed because his defense is significantly lower, and he's just, yeah, that's his main problem, his strength is also a bit lower, so he's not going to be as fast as Oswin, he's a worse version of him, but, I mean, isn't everyone be a worse version of Oswin in some way, uh, Gilliam still kind of gets the job done, as long as you're not fighting like an axe user with him, He's still got more bulk than most early game characters. He still two it kills most enemy types. And other than Seth and maybe Franz, there isn't really, really that, that many people who can take a hit in the early game. Uh, you got a lot of squishy units like uh, Naomi, Lutz, Artur, uh, Vanessa isn't that durable either. Ross, before he's trained, is not that bulky. I guess Garcia can take a hit, and that's about it. So occasionally I find Gilliam's bulk is pretty useful in the early game, and then if you enjoy using him, you can keep using him. Uh, one great thing about Gilliam compared to a lot of other armor knights is he does promote into Great Knight instead of General if you want him to. Uh, that's the class promotion I would recommend for him, Great Knight, because, uh, you know, extra point of move, still the same weapon triangle control because both Generals and Great Knights get all weapon types in this game. And uh, General has better stats and Great Shield, but I think those are like very small differences overall. Great Shield is enemy level percent. Uh, but it's only really significant against magic users, so you shouldn't rely on it anyway. Uh, Great Knight is just nice because it has a lot of bonuses you can rely on, such as the ability to move after trading or rescuing, um, taking and dropping, that kind of stuff. And the extra point of move is just more useful as well, because uh, the lack of mobility on generals can be kind of a problem. But again, you're not forced to do anything I say. If you enjoy generals, and if you like their animations in GBA, who doesn't, then go ahead. Uh, I will admit that Great Knight animations are very stupid. So go ahead, do general if you want to. I recommend Great Knight. Then there's Garcia, and uh, he joins along with Ross. He's a fighter, uh, one of the better fighters in the GBA series, I think. He's um, not great, but he's all right. That's why he's an okay. Um, in the early game, he's actually like, one of the more powerful characters you have, just based on raw strength. Uh, the fact that he uses axes and has a high base strength. Uh, it's not like as strong as Seth, but he has, does more damage per hit than like Franz and Vanessa and all these other people, really. So that's pretty useful. Uh, he can one-run the monsters in Chapter 4 if you want him to. He can one-run soldiers, and he can like two-hit kill most other enemy types. Uh, his bulk is less good than Gilliam's most of the time, other than against like Axe just a double Gilliam, but those are a little rare. So um, if you need someone to take a hit or two, he can be your man. So he can be pretty useful for that. Uh, once ranged with the hand axe, it's pretty nice too. Uh, if you're not training Ross, you can give him the hatchet, have an accurate option for him, in case he needs to do a little damage, but very accurately. So yeah, if you enjoy using him after that, you could you know, keep training him. I would promote him to hero if you're doing that, because that way you get plus two speed. And uh, that's the stat that Garcia has the most trouble with long-term is speed. Like in the early game, I think he has six base speed. It's the same as Doorcast and FE7, which is good enough to not get doubled most of the time. And good enough to double like really slow enemies like knights and soldiers and um, those renovants. 
but that's about it. Uh, maybe some, uh, some what are those called? Bone walkers, maybe. Uh, but in the mid to late game, you need a bit more. So I would recommend promoting him to hero, maybe giving him a speed wing if you want him to double. And late game, you can use like the Brave Axe or the Garm to sustain the ability to one round a KO. Because without double attacking, even with the higher attack that Garcia has, you're generally not one rounding. But uh, Garm gives plus five, speed, plus five speed, really high might, and then effectively against monsters that will get into one at KO. Uh, I don't find him that useful late game, so that's why he's okay situational, but he can definitely put in work. Then Natasha is, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is kind of the problem with this tier, it's hard to like praise units. Uh, I will say staff utility in general is just useful. Um, it's kind of like with Sarah and FE7. Um, healing people is nice, restoring people is good, bury your torch, that whole thing is good. It's just Natasha is just an inferior molder. She joins several chapters later with worse staff rank, worse base level, and uh, worse magic as well at base. Her growth is slightly higher, but it takes her a while to catch up. So to the point where like the difference is like kind of negligible. Um, so this is like no real advantages over Molder, and there's no reason to use both either because you usually won't have enough wounds to heal multiple and by the time the maps get bigger you can also promote your automatic units to get extra staff utility. You also get Sally, so um, sure there's less supply of staff users but there's also less demand. So I would not recommend Natasha unless you like her a lot and in that case you could use a long term over Molder. Just know that the results will be worse but by no means bad enough to be like completely terrible. It's just still usable. And uh, if you play slowly enough, you can still get it promoted in time. It's just, staff XP in this game is really slow. Um, getting only 11 for heal, 12 for mend is very insulting. It means it takes like 9 use, nine turns just to get the single level up. If you look at a unit like Franz, uh, they get that much, they can get a level per chapter usually. If not, like multiple per chapter, just by like enemy phasing and player phasing over and over. Like him fighting like 3 enemies and killing 1. Um, well, not one, but like him killing three enemies and then weakening one is going to give him a level. That's like much more than Natasha will usually get. Um, but at the same time, staff utility is nice. It's just her magic is really low. So keep that in mind. Then there's Joshua. Um, very fast units. Uh, reasonably high attack power. Has high crit and promotion. So if you need a guy that doubles everything, that can be pretty good. Uh, usually in Sacred Stones, you don't really need a guy that doubles everything. You kind of just want a guy that doubles most things and then has good bulk and wants to range and hide your, like, durability and weapon flexibility and stuff and Joshua's kind of lacking in those he doesn't have any good one to range he doesn't have that much strength and he re doesn't rely on criticals to get one round sometimes so um, that's why he's an okay situation rather than good investment uh, in the early game though like having a guy that doubles like even mercenaries and myrmidons can be very useful and he can also weigh himself down a bit with like uh, a steel sword and still double attack the slower enemies like brigands and soldiers so his early game offense is good that's why I think for a while I would definitely deploy Joshua if only because you're lacking in alternatives. And in the mid to late game, if you want to use Joshua, go ahead. A lot of people like his hat, or his hair, or his backstory. So in that case, go nuts. You won't be like super disappointed. Uh, but just know that like if there's like five enemies in range that all have like one, two weapons equipped, uh, like javelins, magic, archers and stuff, he's going to be useless on enemy phase. It's like using an archer in that case. And that can be kind of annoying. Uh, but not unwinnable. And uh, his HP is actually pretty good, so he's not going to like die instantly or anything. Uh, that's not a problem at all. Uh, for promotion, I would recommend Swordmaster. Uh, give him a higher crit chance. Um, the only advantage in combat that Assassin has, which is his alternative promotion, is that you can silence your people, and that activates based on if you crit, you have like a 50% chance to get silencer and just straight up Oko them. And uh, that looks very flashy, looks very cool, but the problem is that uh, it only helps when it crits, and if Joshua crits, they're gonna die anyway. Like, Swordmaster or Assassin, they're probably dead anyway. So you might as well promote the Swordmaster. Get 50% extra crit and uh, better combat stats in general. Uh, higher strength cap if you're into that. Uh, sure, Assassin can pick locks, but like I said, these two aren't barely useful for that anyway. You can buy chest keys, you can usually drop door keys, so you, that's not very useful. So I would recommend Swordmaster, but do what you like. Cyrene, late game Falcon Knight, unfortunately not as good as like FV9 Tanith, her stats are pretty lackluster, she can not one round a whole lot of enemies, she doesn't have any S rank in weapons, so she cannot use the Fedafnir base for example, she only has like A rank in lances, so that's not very good. Um, she's still useful for ferrying people around, I enjoy deploying her in chapter 20 in particular to carry people over the huge amount of terrain. That is very situational though, which is why she's an okay situational. Uh, I'd call her high efforts, but it's not like you can really train her, she levels so slowly. Uh, she can also kill Gorgon Eggs in the chapter 18 map, so that's also useful I guess. Uh, but not great. Uh, if you feel like Cyrene is not worth the effort, then just don't. <laughs> just don't bother deploying her, you won't miss it. 
uh, but there's like some like very situational things she can do. Uh, the only people mode in this whole thing, um, but yeah, she's just... I wouldn't call her like good no investment because she's just not that good. <laughs> Then we have the high effort tier. Like I said, these are mostly underleveled units that you can train up if you want to, but generally won't be worth the effort unless you're just into that kind of effort. And in that case, they're definitely worth the effort because, hey, what else is fun? Um, Naomi, early game archer, uh, kind of like Rebecca and kind of like Waltz, just doesn't really... Um, like, archers just aren't very good when you can kill almost everything with characters that aren't archers because their lack of one range is a really huge detriment. But one nice thing about Naomi, though, is that you can promote a ranger. That gives you access to one range weapons like swords, as well as a mount, whereas most archers are just kind of stuck to promote the sniper. Um, so ranger is pretty nice, I would recommend that, definitely. Uh, like I said, supporting with Colm can be a fun way to get a two-for-one deal. Uh, make two characters that are just not that great at combat a little better. Uh, her bases are like much like Rebecca, it's just... Uh, Pretty disappointing all around early on, but she does have a focus on speed and luck growth, so eventually she just kind of turns into a dodge tank that doubles everything. And uh, with enough attack boosting things, like supports and a killer bow and stuff like that, she can still warm out enemies, especially flyers. It's just, it will probably be player phase only. Uh, she does get D-ranked swords, so you might be able to get her sword rank somewhere, like if she was killing edges after some grinding, then maybe that's worth it. But uh, it will probably be more effort. <laughs> that will probably be it. Then uh, Amelia is a trainee, joins around chapter 9 in both routes, unless you wait on Erica routes. And, like, if you miss her in chapter 9, she joins in chapter 13 instead. Um, a lot of people just, like, kind of steal her speedwing and kill her. Uh, other people like to train her up because she can turn into some fun classes. Uh, I have a whole video about Amelia's good in general. It's a big meme. Uh, I would actually say, like, um... Let's just say good in general. Uh, the, the meme is that she's bad in general, but I've also used her in Link Arena as a good general, so it goes both ways, I guess. Uh, I would not recommend training Amelia if you're looking for a fast way to get through the game, if you're looking for an easy way to get through the game, if you're looking to just play rather than... How do I put this? I mean, training her is, is playing Fire Emblem technically, but it's not the kind of Fire Emblem I personally enjoy. I just like to keep going at a reasonably fast pace, and those contexts, Amelia isn't very good. Uh, if you'd like to slow down, if you'd like to train zeros to heroes, Amelia is very fun. I uh, would recommend Cavalier Paladin always because more movement options, uh, still a high amount of weapon options, and uh, generally good enough stats, but you can also be a general if you want to like go Knight General. Um, her bulk becomes a little better. I find her bulk is fine actually as a Cavalier Paladin if she's trained up. I think the bulk the general provides is overkill, but the lack of mobility is something you just can't compensate for. Uh, unless you want to give her boots, but those only come in the late game, and you can give boots to anyone and make them even better. I would always recommend boots on a flyer, personally. So, yeah, that's why I don't think boots counts. Uh, I'm not going to get into that argument today, because I made like a million videos about it already. Um, but yeah, uh, fun to use. Also, if you want to be an enlightened centrist, you can make her a great knight, but I've never heard anyone advocate for that, actually. Um, it's mostly people who want... Either you want to go paladin, or you want to go general, I think. That's, uh, that's kind of like the two perspectives that people have. Uh, Marissa is like if Joshua joined like uh, about seven chapters later, I think, eight chapters later, depends on the route, I guess, and uh, with roughly the same base stats and not a whole lot of change, except uh, she's a girl. Now that alone makes it worth it for some people. Uh, it doesn't really for me, especially not in like a recommended guide. Uh, but yeah, cool pink-haired assassin slash swordmaster. Um, would recommend the swordmaster for the same reason as Joshua. Uh, but again, takes time to catch up. Uh, significantly worse strength than Joshua, so it relies on crits even more. Um, but she will double attack when trained, probably. La Rochelle, unleveled healer. Uh, the whole fun with unleveled characters is usually that they at least gain XP fast when they kill stuff, and it's very satisfying. La Rochelle can't kill anything because she can't use any, we any weapons or tomes, at least at base, and she's level 3, so it takes a while to grind up. Uh, she only has 6 move, whereas Troubadours usually have 7 in GBA firearms, so that also kind of sucks for her. Uh, only D-rank and staff, so she can't use the barrier or restore. Yeah, she has some problems. I used her in my first playthrough. I grinded her up, I had a lot of fun. Her growths are really good. Uh, her final stats are very good. Uh, she can either go Valkyrie or Mage Knight. I don't think it really matters what she does. The statistical differences are very small. Uh, Light Magic gives you weapon triangle over monsters, uh, like with Dark Magic and stuff. Um, Fire Magic or Anima Magic is better uh, against other enemies because uh, Anima Magic is just stronger and uh, just more efficient generally. So, do whatever you like, it doesn't really matter very much. Uh, she's mostly going to be a staff bot, and there are some advantages to having a mounted staff bot, but she joins a little too late to make her good without any grinding, so beware of that. If you want to grind her, I would recommend using the torch staff, uh, either on the joining map or uh, on like a, 
one of those overworld encounters with fog in it. There, there's like a random chance that they have fog in it, and you can just spam torch, level up all the way that way. Then uh, Yuwen is there, and just like Null, um, he can become, become a summoner, and he should become one because summoners are busted. But there's a lot of different options because, you know, trainees have a lot of options. So we can go uh, Mage into Sage or Mage into Great into Mage Knights. Or he can go um, Shaman into Druid or Shaman into Summoner. Or he can go um, Super Trainee, which is something I haven't talked about. It generally because it's not worth it. And if it's your first playthrough, you're probably not going to see it. But for you, it's probably worth mentioning that he can become a super pupil, I think that's what we call it. Uh, if you clear both Ephraim and Erica routes, you can become that and have access to um, anima, dark, and light magic, which is kind of unique and kind of cool. Um, not really worth considering over summoner because summoners are busted, but if you like it, then you can go ahead and do it, I guess. Um, it's all up to you. Um, like like these other characters, he will take a lot of grinding to get up there because he joins late at basically Ross's base level, like level minus 10. Uh, but if you're okay with slowing down for it, or you know, finding a lot of you know creatures in the wild or in the tower or something, then you can turn it into something useful. Uh, so I'm gonna recommend it, but you can use anything you want. And uh, that's the whole squad in a nutshell. I tried to keep it brief for some of these. I tried to be elaborate on some of the others because I like talking about characters. I talk a lot in general, um, but talking a lot in general is good. I uh, hope you found this guide useful or at least fun to listen to. I uh, hope to see you next time for a more difficult game. Let me know in the comments what game you want to see next. Um, I'm okay with doing either Genealogy next or some of the Tellius games. It doesn't really matter which. Uh, have fun either way. Uh, Shadow Dragon, fine with me too. Just let me know. And uh, yeah, if you're about to play Sacred Stones, actually let me know too. I'm curious if there's anyone who's actually going to be using this guide as more than just something to sleep to. Um, but no matter what, I will see you guys next time. Peace around and goodbye.